Thank you for joining us. My name is Jennifer Hammondy, and I'm a board member with the National Transportation Safety Board. With me today is Dan Bauer, who is a senior investigator with our major investigations division of our Office of Aviation Safety at the NTSB. The NTS NTSB is an independent federal agency charged by Congress with investigating every civil aviation accident in the United States and major transportation disasters in the other modes. Let me first state, on behalf of the NTSB, we'd like to extend our deepest condolences to those who lost loved ones in this tragic event. For those who were injured, we wish a speedy and full recovery. The NTSB arrived on scene at about 4 p.m. this afternoon, and we began to assess this, the scene. We will be uh, collecting perishable evidence over the next hours and days uh, as we begin our investigation. And again, we just arrived on scene but our mission is to determine what happened, why it happened, and to prevent it from happening again. We have a total team, including me, of 10 on scene. We have investigators who have expertise in operations, airworthiness, and we will also be, uh, we will also have a drone specialist on scene who will help us document the scene. In addition, we will have staff from the NTSB from our Family Assistance Division who will help the families uh, connect with the resources that they need. Our investigator in charge is, will be Robert Gretz. He is on the way to the scene right now. He's a senior aviation investigator with the NTSB. What we know so far, and again, this is preliminary information, is that a B-17 tail number November 93012 operated by Collings Foundation out of Stowe, Massachusetts with 10 passengers and three crew on board departed Bradley International at 9.45 a.m. this morning on runway 6. At about 9.50, the crew contacted the tower and reported an issue with the airplane. We are looking into that, that uh, report for further information. We will have inf information later, but don't have more information on what that issue was at this time to share. We know that the crew circled back to runway 6 and attempted to land on runway 6. They impacted the instrument landing system stanchions. The plane veered to the right, crossed over a grassy area, crossed over the tax taxiway, and impacted a de-icing facility. We don't have much more information to share at this time because, again, we just arrived on scene at 4 p.m. We will have additional press briefings, and please monitor Twitter at NTSB underscore newsroom for uh, uh, when those will be held. In the meantime, I have a request for the public. Uh, if you have information to share that you think would be helpful to this investigation, videos, photos, or other information, we urge you to contact us through the following email address. It's witness at ntsb.gov. Again, that's witness at ntsb.gov. Now, as far as going forward with our investigation, again, uh, some of our staff is still arriving on scene. We expect to be here about seven to 10 days at about 10 days is when we issue a preliminary report which provides just the factual information that we have at that time. We will not be determining a probable cause while we, were on, we are on scene. That will take some time. We uh, usually uh, try to close out these investigations within 12 to 18 months with a final report and issue appropriate recommendations 
uh, to the appropriate entities. Um, before I take questions, I do want to thank all the first responders that were on scene and continue to be on scene. It's been extremely helpful and uh, we appreciate them for their efforts and of course all the entities that are here at this briefing. I'm going to take some questions and then we're going to turn it over to some of the other folks, uh, the commissioner and others to speak as well. Uh, I will call on you if you can raise your hand, uh, state your name and your affiliation. Yes. Matt Karen with um, Fox 61. You mentioned these, this perishable evidence. Can you talk about what that is that you'll be collecting? Uh, we'll, co we'll collect anything from video that was provided or that we can find. Um, we will be documenting the scene itself, uh, looking at um, essentially ev everything that would go away once we leave the scene. We'll be collecting information from the airport, from those that operate the plane. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of uh, pictures, videos, and documentation over the next days and, and hours that we'll be getting information from. Yeah. from the NBC, just wondering, is there a black box on this type of plane? And also, are there challenges with an aircraft this old compared to more modern aircraft? Well, uh, first of all, we will be looking at the history of this aircraft and how it was ma maintained. That's part of the information we'll be seeking. Uh, as far as what, inf what black box or other sort of video or mm -hmm. Uh, cameras that may have been on the plane. That's all information that we have to determine and we don't have that yet at that, this time. But that's certainly something that's very interesting to us and that we'll be looking for. Yes. The question was about the, uh, the fatalities uh, from this uh, tragedy. That is something that I will defer to the local authorities, the NTSB's role here is uh, the safety investigation, um, but that is a good question for the authorities. Yes. Patricia Del Rio, Channel 3 WFSB. Are you able to ascertain uh, when this plane was fueled and who did it? It's, it's my understanding that these old planes are fueled by gasoline and not by jet fuel, which is something that is typically used on commercial is that something that you'll be looking into? Uh, the, inform the question was about the fuel used on the aircraft and when it was last fueled. We will be looking at that information. That's standard for us to look at as part of any accident investigation. Again, we just arrived on scene, but that is something that we've discussed that, that we do need to obtain. Uh, the question is, is there a concern about other B-17s that are operating right now? It's too early in the investigation to, to know that at this time, but obviously uh, uh, that's something we'll be looking at. What I will say is that the NTSB, if they feel that there is a safety concern with the B-17s or operations in general such as this, we will issue urgent safety recommendations to uh, try to address that safety issue. Yes? Again, Goldstein News, Paul, Connecticut. How are regulations and inspections different for vintage planes than more modern ones? Uh, it, the question is how are inspections for vintage planes different from modern ones? Uh, we are looking at what, uh, how these were regulated right now, uh, under what part uh, and what the inspection requirements are. That's part of our investigation. We'll have more information on that as this goes along and hopefully we'll be able to provide that at future press briefings. Just, yes. just a Frederick Associated Press. Uh, with the plane of this vintage, do, do we know yet about the number of passengers that would be allowed on a plane like this or the 10 and its, its crew members? Are you going to be looking into that in the course of your investigation? Uh, the question is uh, how many passengers are typically allowed on these types of planes. Uh, again, uh, that is something we look at as part of any investigation, the weight capacity of the plane. So that's something we have to determine going forward. Just yep. going back to the inspections really quickly, not knowing the, the history of the inspections, 
inspect for that particular aircraft, do we even know if there's a protocol for a visual inspection before a pilot were to, to take off? Uh, do you want to? Yeah, I'm sorry. The question is back on the investigations of uh, uh, vintage planes, <clears throat> and that is that. I, I hate to repeat what I said, but it is part of our investigation, and we re we just landed at four o'clock, so that's information we have to look into, and we're getting information literally as we speak. So we will be able to provide that, and at a future time. When this, uh, the question is when this, the, the plane was last flown. Uh, that is a question that we have asked specifically for how many times it was flown prior to this to today. We have not received that information back, but it is something we have uh, requested along with the number of hours that it has flown. Ms. Oswald, do you have the service records already for the plane? We've heard that potentially the engines were worked on as early as uh, on the, uh, the question is on the service records and do we have that information. That is, a, that is again, uh, standard information that we request. The NTSB doesn't have that at this time, but that's something we will be obtaining. Last question. Yep. Eli with NBC Boston. Have you talked to the Collins Foundation people? You said you have some questions here. If so, have they cooperated with you guys thus far? Uh, the question is have we talked with the Collins Foundation? To my knowledge, we have not yet talked with the Collings Foundation, but that's part of our investigative process, and so I expect we will at some point. Thank you for joining us, and again, uh, please monitor NTSB underscore newsroom on our Twitter feed for further press briefings. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Ravella. I'm the Commissioner of Emergency Services and Public Protection for the State of Connecticut. This is an update from our previous press conference earlier today. Um, as you heard, NTSB is on scene. We also have the Office of the Medical Examiner on scene. Um, Department of Energy and Environmental Protection is on scene. The FBI and Homeland Security are also on scene assisting with uh, the investigation. The National Guard um, has been a great partner to us, and I'd like to mention Major General Ivan for his uh, the work of his folks out there, they really stepped up to the plate with logistics and um, supporting fire raw. Um, Connecticut State Police Agent Demon called in over 70 officers, troopers. It's a remarkable effort. They went right to work on uh, securing witnesses, locating video, um, interviewing folks, and probably the most sensitive part of this investigation.